Hi, it's Walt Cobb, Mayor for the City of Williams Lake with the uh, update for the November 23rd Council meeting. We had a couple of delegations on, on the meeting. The first one was the Purple Ribbon Campaign for December 1st to 10th. And that's the, the gender-based violence uh, committee that's done by the Women's Contact Center. And, and it's an annual event. The name has been changed. It, it was once called the Violence Against Women, but uh, the names have been changed. But we did the proclamation. We will be doing uh, the purple lights. I don't know whether everybody's noticed, but we've, we've the lighting on the outside of the building after the siding went on, we've, we have the ability to change colors. So we're gonna change those colors as depending on what the event is, whether it's, uh, well, we did it for the orange shirt day as well. We changed the lights to orange, so we will we'll change them to purple for this from the 1st to the 10th. So the second item was the uh, Green Acres residence, the mobile home park where the slide happened on the Frizzy, on Frizzy Road. Uh, there are still two, two residents that are out of their home, and the funding from the province is running out in December, and, and the the final decision hasn't been made on how we're going to move them forward. There was quite a discussion on it and, and their commitment from, from uh, council and staff that not only uh, we will assist with the fundraising to help them move the property, but we, we are ready to go. Our staff is ready to go to do whatever needs to be done to get the water and sewer in place so they can get their ho mobile homes moved and hopefully settled before Christmas. Uh, I guess the longest discussion was the Poplar Glade, uh, the Kinsman Park discussion. It went, it went on. Um, there was a lot of, I guess what I need to make sure that people understand that there was a lot of discussion about the sale of the property. The idea is to take it out of parkland so we can develop it for housing. The idea is not to just flip it over. We would it, it's going to be a two-part process. The idea was to get as much public input as we could. We have done the survey. The surveys come in. Uh, there, there are different options that people, people would like to see. Uh, but first of all, we have to decide whether we're prepared to dispose of it uh, from the park de designation. Now, like I said, it would be a two-part process. Not only do we, would we have a public input process on taking it out of the parkland, but there would be a second, once that decision is made, there would be a second public hearing, public notice uh, on the zoning, what kind of development we would like to see there, whether it be single family, multifamily. So that discussion would be, would be secondary. So what we've done is ask for council to bring, or ask staff to bring back a report on the next steps, the time frame, the timelines. Uh, we, we have two options, whether we go to the AAP process or whether we go to a referendum. A referendum would probably, it takes a lot longer, so the decision was made if we can, if we can get it through a different process, get it to happen so we can get something happening on the ground uh, as of next year. Um, the also, later on in the, in the evening, because the, the, I guess the misinformation, or not the misinformation, so the, the map, when you showed the map, it showed Poplar Glade as well as Kinsman Park. And there is, a, there is the thought that it's all one piece of property. Well, it isn't one piece of property. The school board still owns the other, and the idea is that we will continue to meet with the school board to see if we can access that property as well, because there's two or three other bidders on that, and, and uh, we'll have to wait and see on that. But that's probably a five-year project. That's the reason we were moving forward on the, on the Kinsman Park to try and get something happening within the next year or so. We've got doctors, we've got lawyers, we've got nurses that can't find housing, and we want to get something to happen as soon as we can. So the good news for the evening was the Center of Mountain Air is returning uh, four flights per week starting December 16th. Um, this is a sign that, that things are getting back to normal after COVID, but also the opportunity for people to get back and forth from the lower mainland because of the floods and the road closures and everything else. So that's, that's the good news and we're looking forward to getting them back at the airport.